All right, it's go time. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in today. Adjust the camera here. Um, before we get started, I want to give a shout out to the two people that um, gave me super chats at the last live stream. I, I, that's my mistake. I wasn't even looking at the chat. I think I was trying to rush to get through it, but I want to give a shout out to MH and I want to read the super chat really quickly. MH says, thanks for sharing the truth with us, Magnificent. We will Trump be holding another rally in Arizona? Um, that I'm not sure of, but I appreciate you, the super chat. I'm sure whenever Trump does hold another rally, it'll be announced. You'll hear about it. And then also JC Bridge says, vaccines are your own choice. Uh, my two Republican friends are vaccinated, but it's my own choice to get vaccinated. Um, Trump didn't want to force vaccines. Biden and Harris told us not to take it last year. Yeah, calling out the hypocrisy. Thank you so much. Appreciate you for those two super chats. Everyone else, God bless you for being here. Make sure you give it a thumbs up on the way in. Shout out to all the moderators, Sean, DM, and whoever else is in there that's moderating. Luciana, we got a lot of moderators in there today. Appreciate you all for being here. Again, give it a thumbs up. Now, guys, what you're looking at here, I wanted to make sure that I put this on the screen. What you're looking at here, this is a photo of me and Mr. Larry Elder. I met him in 2018 at the Young Black Leadership Summit in Washington, D.C. Um, that was my first time meeting him. Great man. We took a couple photos. This one's my favorite, even though we're not looking at the camera. Just the, I'm just happy to meet him, and he's just a genuine, authentic guy. And I, I wanted to post, I wanted to have this on the screen so you guys understand where I'm coming from with all this because I am not, it's not my in my interest to try and smear Larry Elder. Um, that's not why I pointed out last week, if you recall, in the live stream about him saying that he thinks Joe Biden legitimately won the election. In fact, I think Larry Elder is the best candidate for governor of California, absolutely hands down. And uh, the proof is in the pudding because he is being um, smeared and libeled right now, just raked over the coals by local media in California, and he's getting national attention as well. So that's how you know he's the man for the job. That alone, on those grounds alone, before you even get into his policies and his what his philosophy is, his governing principles, before you get into any of that, the fact that the media is going so hard at him means he's the right man for the job. Same could be said for Ron DeSantis, how they went after him, how they went after Trump. The more that we see when the media attacks someone, the more you should probably pay them attention because we all know the media is full of BS, right? So I just wanted to get that out of the way. Now, um, as it relates to Larry Elder's stance as far as the election, after having more time to think about it last week, I think this, okay? One of three things is true about him saying that Joe Biden won. Either he legitimately believes that Joe Biden won the election, got 81 million votes, no fraud, no fake ballots or anything like that. Either he believes that or he doesn't believe that at all because he knows that there's, you know, fraud or whatever, but he can't prove it himself. And he doesn't, he wants to play it, play it safe, maybe to appeal to normies in California. Maybe he doesn't want to be lumped in, in a category. Maybe he doesn't want to have the Linwood type rhetoric about it. You know what I mean? Maybe he's waiting or maybe he just, he has no idea that elections can be stolen. That could be it too. That could very well be it. But my thing is if he doesn't think that elections can be stolen and he doesn't know, he's going to find out pretty soon. Check this out. Hundreds of gubernatorial recall ballots mailed out by the state did not make it to voters. Instead, they turned up in the backseat of a man's car in Torrance. Eyewitness News reporter Josh Haskell tells us how they were found and what happens now. When Torrance police administered a welfare check on a man asleep in a car at this 7-Eleven on Emerald Street one week ago, they found enough items to take him into custody. Drugs and a loaded handgun were recovered. But in the back seat of the car, they found what appears to be stolen mail belonging to hundreds of people, including over 300 recall ballots for the September 14th special election. The election ballots, uh, they were untampered with, they were unopened. Like I said, there were a, a little over 300 of them uh, found. 
primarily from addresses in Mondale. There were some from Compton. Um, we're still trying to figure out uh, where all these belong to, though, at this time. So we're working with the Los Angeles Election Office as well as the U.S. Postal Inspector. That means over 300 Lawndale and Compton residents still haven't received their ballots in the mail. But the L.A. County Registrar's Office now has all the names on the recovered ballots and is reissuing ballots to everyone impacted. The registrar says this doesn't appear to be an attempt to influence the election as other stolen mail was found with the ballots. In a statement, the registrar's office said there's nothing to indicate this was focused on the election. A lot of people, including us, want to know how did these ballots get in that subject's car and what was the intent of those ballots being in that subject's vehicle. Torrance police say the man sleeping in the vehicle has been released on his own recognizance and is no longer in custody. Voters can request another ballot by contacting the LA County Registrar's Office. You can also track the status of your ballot when it has been mailed, counted, and received. We have a link to that site on our website, abc7.com. Hello, I'm Mark. The link, the, the, the fix is in, you guys. The fix is in. Now, um, I saw another uh, news outlet in California report on this, and they said basically they're looking into it to see if there was any fraud intended because he had other mail. It wasn't just ballots. So, I mean, obviously you could easily just put somebody else's mail in there to make it seem like, oh, he's just stealing mail indiscriminately, not targeting ballots specifically. But come on, 300 ballots. Come on. They're telling you, hey, maybe it's not related to fraud. Maybe they're not planning anything. I mean, it's already kind of the fix was in. We knew this when uh, the Delta variant started surging because now that's the perfect justification for mail in ballots in California. So, yeah, if Larry Elder doesn't think elections can be stolen, he's going to learn out, learn pretty quickly. Uh, from this situation right here. And I pray that that doesn't happen. And again, I don't know if he actually thinks what he said. I don't know if he believes it or if he was just trying to, uh, you know, just take the high, I don't know, not take the high road, but he just tried to maybe, maybe not really pick sides on it. Maybe just say, oh yeah, yeah, he won. He won. Sure. Sure. But so I'm, I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt on that because when I know it's like, he is the best guy for the job. That doesn't mean necessarily there's nobody better, but there nobody better has come forward. And obviously he's going to be better than Gavin Newsom. So I think he's the guy because all of the propaganda hit pieces coming at him from the, from the LA times, from the New York times, from our favorite from MSNBC, Joy Reid. I mean, just the, the ridiculous headlines. Also Larry Elder did hire a new campaign manager. So I think that that's kind of a, that's kind of a big deal. And this is as of two days ago. So I'm guessing he's responding to probably some of the backlash he got from, you know, what he said about the um, 2020 election. So that's interesting. But here's what he had to say just the other day. Um, where'd it go? Here it is. Uh, about the vaccine and mass mandates in California. So this, again, strengthens his candidacy. I become governor. Assuming the, I appreciate the optimism, sir. When I become governor, assuming there are still mandates for vaccines and mandate for face masks, they will be repealed before I have my first cup of tea. Look at that applause. Do you know any other? I saw somebody. I saw somebody put in the chat. He's not the guy. Okay, person who said he's not the guy. I need you to put in the chat and say who is the guy and why he's the guy and why he hasn't emerged, and why the media isn't attacking him. And I don't want to hear anything about, well, he hasn't got his name out there. Well, he's not the guy because the recall is next month. So Larry Elder is that guy. And Californians know it. They can see it. The media knows it, which is why they're full steam ahead attacking him, calling him the black face of white supremacy. You know, they 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 bring out their bigots, right? They're, they're attacking him for his race. They're attacking him for his ideology. They're fear mongering. They're telling you um, there's a headline from L.A. Times. Black and Latino Californians will um, experience a worse life under Larry Elder. I don't know if that's exactly how they worded it. They basically just said 
black and brown people will suffer more under Larry Elder. That's hilarious. They're going to suffer more under Larry Elder as governor than they are suffering right now under decades upon decades of Democrat control. The crime surge in LA, violent crime, the homelessness, the black people on skid row, the fact that high schoolers can't read at grade level, the gang activity, the drug activity, the cost of living. They're saying all that's going to be worse if a Republican gets in power. That's what they're saying. They're afraid. They're terrified of this man. If they got to stoop to such laws as saying he is the black face of white supremacy, that's an actual headline from the LA Times calling him the black face of white supremacy. Whenever you got to run such a ridiculous headline like that, it's because you're afraid. It's because you're panicking, right? That's what it is. So I'm going to pull up the chat too, because I'm curious for the person that said, he's not the guy. I need you to tell me who is the guy so we can get him on maybe and promote him. Cause I'm guessing he's got a small enough profile to where maybe I can reach out to him and have him on. I'm guessing you're just lashing out at Larry Elder because of his stance on the election, which I said, I met Larry Elder. He's a very, and I said this at the time when I uh, criticized him for his stance on the election. I said at the time, I'm like, he's a nice man. He's genuine. I don't think he means California harm, but this is what he said, right? But he may not actually believe that. I don't know. I don't know. You don't know. He did say it though. But other than that, I think he's a good solid guy. You just heard him, what he said about the mass mandates and about the vaccine mandates. And this is after he didn't really have a strong stance coming in to his candidacy. I think there was he was photographed the day he went to go submit his paperwork with a mask on in a county building. He went to go submit his paperwork. He had a mask on. And I think someone asked him, I want to say it was Anomaly, somebody in California held his feet to the fire and like, uh, I would consider voting for you because you're a nice man. I've listened to your, your syndicated talk radio show. You're a great guy, very smart, very passionate. You know about the issues facing California, but you don't have a strong enough stance on these lockdowns and mandates, which is fair criticism. And now he has a stronger stance on lockdowns and mandates. Isn't that what you want out of a candidate? Nobody is perfect. Literally zero people are perfect. So if you have a candidate in mind that you think would be good, but there's a red flag, the best thing you can do, as I've been saying for weeks now, is if you get a chance to talk to them, ask them, press them for details on their stance and try to see if that's what they really stand on. And if they don't, then you'll understand if they're a good candidate or not. Also, they may not be able to read the room. They may not understand that this is that big of an issue. And if they talk to some people who are interested in voting for them, or if they're already in office, for example, you can talk to them about issues. Maybe they'll have a tougher stance. That's all you can really hope for and ask for at this point. You got to vet them. I think Larry Elder, outside of the couple statements that he's made, has been well vetted. I don't think anybody can say that he's some like rhino or anything like that. He's been on the radio for years and people love the man. So as far as his his stance on COVID, now he has a stronger stance on COVID. That is huge. So hopefully somebody can ask him when the time is right. I don't know if the time right now is right to ask him about um, the 2020 election. Do you think it was stolen? Because that's the other thing too. If he thinks the election is stolen and that he doesn't trust the election process, the left will just attack him. The media will just be like, well, why is he running? If the elections can be stolen, why would he bother even running if it'll just be stolen from it? Hint, we know that it can be stolen because I just showed you a news clip of them finding mail-in ballots in somebody's car. Some rando dude sleep in his car in a 7-Eleven parking lot. You think those mail-in ballots that he just happened to have in his car was just because, oh, he's just some like drug addict guy still in mail looking for money, but he also wanted to pick up ballots. Come on, man. So we know elections can be stolen. The question is, does Larry Elder know that elections can be stolen? I don't think it's a reason to not vote for him. It's a reason to, to press for details. If, if you get a chance to go to one of his events, take a photo with him. I know that you can look online right now. He's making the rounds. He is the top 
candidate to take down Gavin Newsom. And we're going to find out in, I think, September 14th, September 14th. That's like in two weeks, two and a half weeks, something like that. So we're going to find out a lot about what's going on. And the other thing about this issue, this is the first major election um, electoral issue. This is the biggest one, the first one since the 2020 election. So we're going to find out a lot. This is our largest state. It's a very far left state. But it is, in many years, moved back towards the center. There's a lot of conservatives there. It's not as leftist as you think it is. But we're going to find out a lot about the state of California. And we're going to see if this reverberates around the country. Because if they're allow, if they steal this election after we what we just watched in 2020, if they're able to successfully steal this election, when you see Larry Elder pulling crowds like this, I wonder if Gavin Newsom can do the same. The answer is no, he cannot. But you see Larry Elder and you see similarities to Trump. Surging support, relentless attacks from the media, ridiculous propaganda headlines. I call him the the black face of white supremacy. You know that he's strong on certain things. You know that he's connected to the issues. He talked about what's going on in the school district. He's called out Maxine Waters. He's literally going up against the machine. California, if you don't know, has its own little deep state going back 80 years, 80 years of corruption and nepotism in California have led it to right where it is now. And Larry Elder is going up against the grain. Sorry for any Caitlyn Jenner fans out there. That ain't it. He ain't it. Larry Elder is the guy. And so I would say that I basically, even though my opinion doesn't really matter that much, I would say that I'm endorsing Larry Elder for governor of California based on what I've seen over the past couple of weeks with, again, like I said, a little bit of vetting. People just go, Hey, talk to him about it. Like, Hey, do you, you know, get him off record. It doesn't, you don't need to have it on record. Cause that's the thing. He doesn't want to get caught up probably in it with a gotcha question, which is probably what that question was when he was talking like, do you think that Joe Biden is the president of the United States? Who knows what that person's intentions were? They were probably trying to smear him. So that was probably a gotcha question, right? But if you think about it, just like how I said the other day, when Trump held his rally in Alabama, he got booed when he started patting himself on the back about the vaccine. When he started trying to take a victory lap, the audience booed, rightfully so. And Trump responded. That's what you need. You need them to be receptive to your views and what you don't agree with. And Trump gets it. So, and I think Larry Elder gets it because like I said, he has a stronger stance on COVID. But anyway, I'm gonna show y'all guys this video. This video actually came out probably three years ago and I shared it on Facebook and it got a whole bunch of views. I think I actually got put in Facebook jail for this, but this video right here, it's about five minutes long. It's eye-opening because I want you guys to see just how bad it is in California. It is so bad. It dates back 80 years. Just check it out. Pat Brown's father, Edmund Joseph Brown, was known for running scams and gambling operations in San Francisco. With the help of businessman William Newsom II, Pat Brown became governor of California for two terms. During his governorship, he awarded the Squaw Valley concession contract to William Newsom III and his partner, John Pelosi. The deal was criticized for the state of California paying for everything and getting nothing. William Newsom III grew up with the governor's son, Jerry, who was training to be a Jesuit priest. John Pelosi's son, Paul, married Nancy D'Alessandro, daughter of Thomas D'Alessandro Jr., who was known for smuggling heroin into the U.S. with Lucky Luciano and the Baltimore Mafia. John Pelosi's son, Ron, married William Newsom's daughter, Barbara. Nepotism. Over ongoing disputes about the Squaw Valley concession, William Newsom Sr. threatened to hurt the governor politically, just as Governor Brown was running for a third term against Ronald Reagan. He lost. 
But eight years later, the former governor's Jesuit son, Jerry, reclaimed the governorship in 1974. He appointed William Newsom III to a Placer County judgeship in 1975, and three years later to the State Court of Appeal. William Newsom was an attorney for oil magnate J. Paul Getty, named in the 1966 Guinness Book of World Records as the world's richest private citizen. And while serving on the appellate bench in the 1980s, he helped Getty's son, Gordon, secure a change in state trust law that allowed him to claim his share of a multi-air trust. After Newsom retired from the bench, he became administrator of the Getty Trust and provided seed money for his son, Gavin Newsom, Nancy Pelosi's nephew, to start the plump jack business that led to a career in San Francisco politics as mayor of San Francisco and lieutenant governor of the state of California. Gavin Newsom was informally adopted by the Gettys after his parents divorced and recently succeeded family friend Jerry Brown to be the current governor of California. For 80 years, these four families have ruled over the state of California politically. And with the help of Kamala Harris, Maxine Waters, Adam Schiff, and Dianne Feinstein, California's uncontrollable state government spending has amounted to over $2 trillion in debt and the highest tax rates in the country. The homelessness population is on the rise so much that a typhus outbreak has reached epidemic levels. Thousands of needles from illicit drugs litter the streets. They have made California a sanctuary state. They have been steadily chiseling away at the Second Amendment. They have passed laws for mandatory vaccinations. And they continue to aggressively oppose our president on every front. On October 1st, 2016, right before Donald Trump won the election, President Obama transferred full control of the internet from the US government to an independent California nonprofit organization. In a cyber war scenario, the US government may not have control over the internet. Even if it secures military and government domains and IP addresses, the targets in cyber warfare are likely to be civilian, and the U.S. government requires private sector infrastructure to operate. Since the internet underpins our computer systems, electrical grids, communication systems, and other critical infrastructure, our entire civilian society could be at risk. Who controls California? Who controls the four families? What is a republic? For NewsWars.com, this is Gregory. Corruption from top to bottom. That is corruption. That's what Larry Elder's up against. That's how huge I think that this, this recall of Gavin Newsom is. You saw they just went from family to family, all the nepotism. Did you know that Gavin Newsom is Nancy Pelosi's nephew? Did you know that? Did you know about the Gettys? Did you know about the history of California and all that corruption? Did you know that Obama transferred power to of the internet to a, a private company in, in California? See how it can all kind of play together with their big agenda, the Great Reset agenda? Cybersecurity, shutting down the internet. Now we know it's a it's a company in California that has power over all the internet. So I mean, if, if you Gavin Newsom remains in power or if they get their own little puppet in there, then you can see that they can accelerate this. This is our largest state, the largest state in the country. That's why I think that this this recall election is tremendous. The whole country is going to be watching, if not the whole world. And we'll see how this plays out. Now it probably makes sense why the media is going after Larry Elder. Larry Elder has been endorsed by lots of people. He's just you and me, people like us. He seems like the people's candidate. Meanwhile, the incumbent, Gavin Newsom, he's got Kamala Harris coming out there to campaign for him. 
Hopefully that's the kiss of death because she came in last place in the primaries in her own state when during the Democrat primary. She was like last place. So maybe that's the kiss of death. Elizabeth Warren is supporting him. All these establishment Democrats, these corporate Democrats are backing Gavin Newsom, of course. Of course, Hollywood will come out and endorse him and back him. He's raised, I believe, $50 million to campaign against Larry Elder. They're freaking out because Larry Elder could be like a Trump guy, somebody from the private sector, a business owner, somebody that can't just call racist, even though they literally called him the black face of white supremacy. It's because they're panicking. I would love to see Trump endorse Larry Elder, not just with the one of those statements that he releases. I think he should hold maybe not a rally in California, but he should go out there to campaign for Larry Elder. I think that would have a tremendous impact. Or maybe it doesn't. I don't know. But I personally feel like if he went out there and gave an endorsement and that would help to boost Larry Elder, just like it helped to boost Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis was was struggling in his primary before he got the Trump endorsement. Or he could just sit back. Maybe his, his strategy is to just sit back and let it happen. Let him see what happens. Because, you know, like I said, people like Kamala Harris going to endorse Gavin Newsom is probably going to have the opposite effect because she's so damn repulsive that it's go- probably just going to make people go and uh, support Larry Elder. But I just had to talk about that. The corruption in that state dating back 80 years. And then you see all these people like Nancy Pelosi, Maxine Waters, people who nobody likes these women. They're the most, some of the most unlikable women on earth. And yet they continue to get reelected every two years, four years. You really think that that's the case? No. Like I just said, they found ballots in the backseat of some dude's car. How many other people in the state of California are trafficking these ballots? With the COVID surge and the shutdown, oh, it's perfect timing for mail-in ballots. Wow, it turns out California doesn't really want to recall Gavin Newsom. Watch it happen, guys. Let me read some of these super chats before they get away from me. Bring this on the screen here. Charles says, California had has had a Republican governor most recently, more recently than Oregon and Washington, Pete Wilson and George something. I can't pronounce that. Despite its liberalism, there are conservative areas like Orange County and others. There are. The problem is California has been controlled by the cities, which is why there was a petition going around years ago for California to separate and become like three states. Because right now, it's mainly controlled by L.A., San Francisco. I don't even think San Diego is that liberal. But L.A. County alone has 10 million people in it. So there's a lot that Larry Elder is up against. He's up against his own little deep state machine in California. Luciano says, I see people don't know what Ocam's razor is. I don't know. I don't get that one. Luciano also says, Jenner is better than Newsom. Elder is better than Jenner. Ocam's razor, ladies and gentlemen, if you're having difficulty with the choices. I don't know what you, I don't, I'm not sure what you what reference you're making, but um, I appreciate it. Let's be frank also says, just like when Trump was booed this weekend. Yes, Trump was booed. Some people try to say he wasn't booed. I was literally standing inside the, just because you didn't hear where, maybe where the microphone was because the sound around Trump is what the microphone picks up. But where I was standing back in the overflow, it was boos. And it, it's, it would be shocking if there weren't boos. I would be shocked if people didn't boo. I would boo anybody that is out there touting this vaccine. That doesn't mean I hate them, but I'm saying, nah, man, no. So I, I'm, I'm okay with the booing. And people try to say, oh, that, that's not a boo. It wasn't that big of a deal. It kind of was in a good way. It also shows that MAGA isn't just some mindless cult that's going to clap like a seal every time Trump opens his mouth. If he opens his mouth and says the wrong thing or something that is against America first, freedom first, liberty first, then MAGA needs to let him know. Isn't that the best way to go about it? Otherwise, it is an actual cult. I don't believe it's a cult, which is why 
I said it's a good thing that people booed. DM says, Mike Nificent, please post a link to that video. You got it. Oh, I can't. Hold on. Yes, I can. Fun. It's in there. That's the link to that video. And you can also find that on, on Greg Reese from InfoWars. That's, that's his video from like four years ago. And I posted it. Like I said, I posted it on Facebook and it got a lot of views. A lot. And then I think I got some kind of um, time out for it because it's powerful. Because a lot of people didn't even know that, that our largest state has been controlled by four families for the last 80 years, with the exception of what? Ronald Reagan and the Terminator winning the election. That's it. So I'll move on from that to this. Oh, here we go, guys. Now that we got that all the way. Washington school is blasted for making student athletes wear ankle monitors so they can be alerted if another player tests positive for COVID. Yeah, I'll read it again. Washington school is blasted for making students, student athletes wear ankle monitors so they can be alerted if another player tests positive. Now, there's already been a couple stories released since this came out saying right wing um, right wing news or conservatives target this falsely claiming that they're making athletes wear ankle monitors. Look at this proximity trace. Is this getting dystopian enough for y'all yet? In the time of COVID-19, how will you maintain safe working distances? You need a government tracking device. That's how. First, they just want you to wear it on the outside of your person, wear it around your ankle, wear it as a watch. Maybe they'll incorporate it with your current smartwatch. But before next, it'll be an implantable chip. I showed you a couple weeks ago how the Pentagon already imp- uh, approved, developed and approved microchips to insert under the skin to detect if you have COVID. So why not some kind of proximity tracer, guys? It's just a proximity tracer. It's not a tracker. The euphemism is proximity tracer. They make it sound really sophisticated and kind of cool. So there's an active feature and a passive feature. I don't know if I can zoom in on it or not. Maybe I can. Yeah, here we go. Feedback in the form of visual and audible alarm. So individuals know when to adjust their current distance to a proper social distance. Guys, They don't trust you enough. In this nanny state that we are entering, you don't know if you're too close to someone. So there is a proximity tracker that's going to give you a gentle reminder via beeping sound that, hey, you're too close to that stranger over there. Or maybe it's somebody you know. You give a loved one a hug, a friend. If it's an unauthorized meetup or hangout, you're going to probably have this, this feedback, little feedback. Or there's a passive feature which says, collection of worker interactions for a contact tracing should an individual test positive. Yeah, collective collection of worker interactions for contact tracing should an individual test positive. The main device of proximity trace, the trace tag is worn on the body or affixed to a hard hat for proximity detection and contact tracing. Together, we can keep people safer by controlling them, or by maintaining social distances in the workplace and help support organization strategies for getting back to work. So this is being used in like a work setting, but now they're talking about uh, student athletes have to use this. This is pretty wild. So they're developing devices for all the people out there that think, COVID is just going to go away if all of the stupid Trump supporters get their shot. COVID will go away for all those people. Yeah, they're developing devices. They're building facilities to house the unvaccinated. You mean to tell me that this is temporary if all of the Trump supporters and right-wing anti-vaccine conspiracy theorists just follow Fauci and the science and get their shot? This will all go away and we'll be led back to our freedoms and live in happy harmony. All the people that believe that all the people who are now overnight big pharma sales reps, they're selling you on the vaccine. They're telling you what's good for your health, even though they don't have a medical degree. 
and they'll tell you you're spreading COVID misinformation. You're spreading medical misinformation online. But also, I'm going to tell you, you need to get a medical procedure. I'm going to shame you for not getting the same medical procedure as me. Those people think that this is going to go away. And there is definitely no agenda. Government can totally be trusted. They really care about our health. And this will go away if all you anti-vaxxers just get your shot. Yeah. Proximity tracers. They've developed all of this technology. Did you guys see the Boston uh, Boston Dynamic, whatever, their little robot that they're using now? This robot that's super athletic. It looks like it's stronger than you. It looks creepy as hell. They're developing that. And I wonder why. Elon Musk is talking about some robot that will hopefully do mundane chores in a few years. They've got robot police dogs to patrol Central Park in New York City. They've already piloted that. They've got drones that can detect your temperature and see how far you are or close you are to the next person. Yeah, they have no plan of this going away. This is <laughs> this is the new norm that they're bringing in. So anyway, Eatonville High School in Washington is getting pushback, rightfully so, because they're trying to ankle monitor athletes. Ankle monitors are for criminals, not children, commented some guy or some lady named Holly in a Facebook post. The measure has been deemed extreme and invasive as vaccine and mask mandates have prompted a heated debate in states across the U.S. and fears of government overreach grow among parents. See, what the what's going to happen is the government will probably have mostly a hands-off approach because they know they can't really do as much as they think they can. What they can do is apply endless pressure to the private sector to enforce the mandates. So it's the private sector that you should really be mad at. They should just, they should get the punishment, the private sector, because they're the ones bending the knee and doing the bidding of the government. You saw Biden just the other day called for all businesses to mandate vaccines. Now, I also said, watch it happen. Watch Costco and Target and Bed Bath & Beyond and shopping malls, watch them fall in line and say, you will not enter this building unless you have been vaccinated. Show me your papers. There's not enough pushback. If there is pushback from corporations, then it all falls apart. And the only way to get corporations to push back is brave employees refusing to work, refusing to enforce it. How can Costco enforce this when they eventually say, you can't shop at Costco until you've gotten this shot and you show us a paper proving it, how can Costco enforce that if the employees don't show up to work? Costco doesn't make money. If the employees refuse to look at someone's medical papers or even ask for them, they don't make money. They do not make money. In fact, they lose money. And just by them mandating it, they haven't mandated it yet, but they will. Just by them mandating it, they will lose money because there's going to be people like me. I'm an example of this. If Costco mandates it, I will cancel my membership. I will never shop there again. That's what will happen. They won't gain uh, customers. They're going to lose customers. And they'll lose employees if employees are brave enough to stand up. That's what it will take. But that's where we are. They're talking about mandating vaccines and they're pushing ankle monitors calling them proximity devices get yourself a nice little proximity tracer so that you can be safe from covid that's what we're going to do we have to track you we have to put this device on you so you know because you're not smart enough to do it on your own anyways that's what's going on in covid news climate change news this CBS, oh man, how climate change helped strengthen the Taliban. That's right, guys. Climate change strengthened the Taliban. It wasn't government mismanagement. It wasn't foreign policy blunders. It wasn't actually handing them guns or telling them when we're going to withdraw. It wasn't a botched exit strategy, which was really a surrender, but that's another story. It was none of that. It was climate change, which means it was you. It's your fault. You watching this stream right now. 
you're the reason the Taliban has been strengthened because, I mean, as you eating those T-bone steaks and driving Ford pickup trucks, you guys are the ones that help to strengthen the Taliban. Now, in this article, I'm not going to read the whole thing. It's so stupid. They're talking about how droughts and floods have impacted farmers. And because of government mismanagement in Afghanistan, you know, the average farmer, the normies over there, they have they've lost trust in the government. Huh, imagine that losing trust in the government. So that what they're saying is the Taliban has capitalized on agricultural stress and distrust in government to recruit supporters. Alam said a group has been has the means to pay fighters more five to ten dollars per day than what they are making as a farmer. So that's the other thing, too. They're saying farmers and all these, you know, agricultural workers are struggling. So the Taliban has the means to pay them more if they want to join fighters. You you see the parallel, how they compared literally the an ex-CIA guy compared Trump supporters to the Taliban. It's the same dog and pony show. It's the same rhetoric that they use to smear Trump supporters. It's the same thing. Oh, Trump's just capitalizing on this. It's these evil people. It's not the government. It's not that the government let them down. It's not that the government screwed things up for them. It's that these radical extremists online are doing recruiting. So yeah, but they're calling they're saying it's climate change. That's what's hilarious about it. Climate change helps strengthen the Taliban. I don't know, guys. You decide. I don't know. Was it really you? Or is this article just some BS from the Alphabet News organization, CBS? CBS that ran the 60 Minutes hit piece on Ron DeSantis. CBS that got caught with fake patients in the hospital last year. We caught them red-handed. All the receipts are online. You can find them yourself. Don't take my word for it. Look it up. It's still there. CBS, another trusted name in news, propaganda. See the very headlines they use undermine public trust. Then they get mad that you don't trust them. When they give you endless reasons not to trust them, they get mad because you don't trust them. Clown world. Another thing in clown world circulating today. Airbnb offers free housing to refugees. Refugees fleeing Afghanistan are getting free stays at Airbnb. A couple things with that. I didn't know Airbnb owned any properties. So how are they going to house people? Now, this article says they are incentivizing people because they know they don't own any properties. They're going to give people a little break if they house these Afghani refugees, of which there are 20,000 worldwide for free. That's what they're saying. They're calling it a humanitarian crisis. Damn those Americans that are stuck in Afghanistan. They're not important. We need to get these 20,000 Afghani refugees resettled in your home via Airbnb. That sounds, that's just, I'm, I'm sure some people are going to do it. And hey, God bless them. They're doing what they feel is right. They're opening up their homes and their hearts to people in need. But the fact that Airbnb, this is their top priority. I just feel like, come on. And especially someplace like the United States, um, I don't recall Airbnb ever offering, you know, homeless Americans a place to to stay for free. I don't think I just think they're trying to cash in right now, trying to make a name for themselves. It doesn't feel very genuine to me, especially when, like I said, they're not prioritizing people that were already struggling before the Afghani crisis. Now, now all of a sudden, this is a humanitarian crisis. We have to open up everyone's homes, but let's forget about the American citizens that are just trapped over there. I'm just saying, this doesn't pass a smell test for me. This just seems very inauthentic. This seems very backwards and they don't even own the property. So, I mean, it's going to take a lot of cooperation from people. You know, I just don't understand why Afghan, Afghan refugees aren't going to other countries in the Middle East. I believe they could go to Saudi Arabia for a safe haven without, you know, there being any, um, without it being, let's just say, a cultural mismatch. 
kind of like how you know people fleeing Central and South America, let's say they're fleeing Guatemala. Why aren't they seeking asylum in Mexico where they speak English there? Mexico was offering them all kind of stuff. They could stay at a hotel. They could get money. They could get jobs. Mexico was actually ready to take a lot of those refugees, but they wanted to bypass Mexico and come to the United States, which means they're not fleeing persecution. They're economic migrants. Don't you question the motives of somebody that's like, hey, I, know, I see that th this bear is chasing you down the street and there's there's a bunch of cars lined up. You could jump in this Toyota and seek refuge from the bear. But the person's like, no, I'm going to keep running because there's a there's a Mercedes down the street. I'm going to get in the Mercedes. Well, then you question the motive. Are you trying to escape the bear or are you trying to get yourself a nicer car? That's just the first example that popped in my head. If you're trying to seek refuge, why would you seek refuge at the very first place possible instead of, no, I'm going to continue on through Mexico and go to the United States? Why are they not bringing these refugees to other countries in the Middle East. I'm just saying, guys, it just, what, too much common sense? I don't know. I mean, we already know what it is. I'm pretending like I don't know, asking these questions, but we know what it is. They're going to be resettled right here in the United States, strategically, in swing states. Look for them to show up in Florida. Of course, they will not stop until they have control of Florida. They want control of Florida so they can shut people like me up so they can lock people down, so they can try to take away people's freedoms. They need control. They got to get DeSantis out of the way. So what better way than to change the people who live in Florida that vote? That's another way. They have many ways to steal elections. They have many ways to, to give themselves an advantage in hopes of a favorable outcome because they can't win on policy. They have to cheat. They have to lie. They have to manipulate. They have to fear monger. Like in California, oh, he's going to make, Larry Elder's going to make all the black and brown people's lives worse if a Republican's elected in California, especially a black face of white supremacy Republican, it's going to ruin the lives of many black and brown people because they're afraid of this man right here. So they got to run all the propaganda. They got to attack him just like they attack Trump, just like they attack Ron DeSantis. They got to resettle refugees in these states to strategically give themselves an advantage. They think you're too stupid to notice. And if you do happen to call them out, well, they'll call you all these names. And they want to segregate you by your vaccination status, if not your skin color altogether. And they want to put you in these freaking ankle monitor tracking systems. Again, these are all real headlines, articles that can be researched, fact-checked, Look up everything that I just told you guys about. Look up this video. Four corrupt families have controlled the state of California for 80 years. So that's just one of many things Larry Elder is up against. Godspeed, Larry Elder. They're finding ballots that have been stolen in the backseat of cars. Look up all this stuff, guys. That's what, that's what I'm trying to do is just let you guys know what's going on. Bring up stories I think are interesting or relevant. And call it good. Now, I do need to read some Super Chats because I got to wrap it up here. Where did my screen go? I think, hold on. Bear with me here. I'm still getting the hang of all this stuff. All the screen sharing and whatnot. Where did it go? I think I might have accidentally closed it, y'all. I'm trying to find the screen with all of the Super Chats so I can read it out for you guys. Okay, here it is. Here we go. I'm going to put it back on the main screen here and then share it. And then little man's crying. So then I got to get back to him. Okay. Tanya, thank you for your super chat. I already got Frank. There's some other people that super chatted. I got Charles. One from uh, Jen. Jen says um, nothing, just a super chat. Thank you, Jen. And I appreciate everybody for tuning in today. Make sure that you guys give this a thumbs up. It's so imperative that you guys give this a thumbs up so we can circumvent these algorithms and we can get the views that we deserve on this channel. This is not just my channel. This is your channel. If there's something you want me to cover, the email is mikenificent813 at gmail.com. Follow me on all of the social media accounts. Gab, I'm on 
Twitter. I'm on Getter. I'm on all of these social media platforms. Do it all. Appreciate you. And I, I want to say thank you to the moderators for helping to get the word out. You guys are the best. Appreciate all of y'all. I will probably be back tomorrow, but there's there's no guarantee. I was actually able to do this live stream today. It just so happened to work out that I could go live right at two. I will try to do it tomorrow. But again, guys, just do all the research. Someone said, don't forget DM. I won't forget DM. DM is the real MVP out here. DM, Joker, Luciano, Sean, all y'all. St. Nificent, if he's in the building. All y'all guys, man. Appreciate y'all. Anyway, I'm wrapping up. God bless you. You know, tell the truth, shame the devil. I'll catch you guys in the next stream.